The mules are in the corral. Welcome to Mule Talk, and I'm Cindy K. Roberts, your host. On this episode of Mule Talk, we have back our author, TV personality, and world-renowned mule trainer, Meredith Hodges of the Lucky Three Ranch. Welcome back. Glad to be back. Well, this is pretty exciting because we're on episode two about mule and donkey movies and TV shows. And I thought I knew every film that had mules and donkeys in them, but you put a pretty extensive list together. So I can't wait to hear about all of these. So let's hear it. Take the reins, Meredith. We talked about doing that parachuting commercial. Now I'm going to go into some of the movies that mules have been in. And one of them is Objective Burma. And that was a story, and er Errol Flynn uh, starred in that movie, and it was about Merrill when they parachuted those mules in 1945 into Burma. It's a drama, and the movie stars, of course, was Errol Flynn and James Brown, William Prince, and a bunch of other people. But the thing that always disturbed me about that one was that they went ahead. This is real life now. This is this is this is a movie they did it for. But when they actually parachuted those mules into Burma, of course they didn't pay attention to all of the details and everything. They thought they could just put these animals into the rescue harness and push them out the back of the plane, and that they would land okay because they wouldn't be coming down on their legs that that hard. But I don't think they realized how hard they were going to come down, and a lot of those mules in reality died mm. uh, because they weren't ready for it. They just pushed them out of the back of a plane with a parachute on. Right. That, that'd be like pushing somebody out the back of the plane and saying, well, all you got to do is pull this string. Well, <laughs> do you know the anxiety you must feel when you're getting pushed out of there? Are you going to sure. remember to pull that string? Right. <laughs> now they go ahead and make, you know, have you make a dive with somebody. Yeah. You know, you know, you do tandem dives and everything so that you get used to what you're going to feel like when you're falling. Um, those kinds of details are really, really important. Now, another Mule movie in 1950 was made with Gene Autry uh, called Mule Train, and I think there's probably a lot of people out there that have watched this one. And it was uh, all about the monopoly of transportation um, and how to build dams and things like that with the mules and everything and the work that they did back then. Probably the most popular movie that people will know about is Francis the Talking Mule with Donald O'Connor. <laughs> and those films were made from 1950 to 1956. And it, it focuses on the exploits of Francis, an experienced army mule. And Peter Sterling played Donald O'Connor, the young soldier who he befriends. Francis then stays with Peter through civilian life and back in the military. In the original 50s film, the mule identifies himself to the commanding general as Francis, the 123rd Mule Detachment. Um, serial number M52-519, uh, with a plot device like the later series, Mr. Ed, Francis would usually talk only to Peter causing problems for his nominal master. Uh, as the titles indicated, each film had a different setting or a different gimmick, exposing the world wise mule and the naive to G G I uh, naive G I to racetrack excitement, the world of journalism and many branches of the military, from West Point to the Wax to the Navy. The basic plots were fairly similar, however. Sterling with the the sage but sardonic advice of Francis, gleaned from overhearing generals, plan strategy, or from discussions with other equines, uh, would triumph over his own incompetence. However, inevitably, he would be forced to reveal that his advisor was a mule <laughs> and be subject to mental analysis. I guess we're all subjects for that, right? Because <laughs> right, we, we, we right. take advice from our mules. Right. Uh, 
sometimes more than once per film. And <laughs> boy, you know, in our our world, then it's sometimes more than once per day, a lot more than once per day. When Francis displayed his talent, usually either to individuals or to a large group, some of the Francis films had animated trailers. Uh, the ones that were made was Francis the, Francis the Talking Mule, Francis Goes to the Races, Francis Goes to West Point, Francis Covers the Big Town, Francis Joins the Wax, Francis in the Navy, and Francis in the Haunted House. And they were made in that order from 1950 to 1956. Wow. Um, so they, they ran those for quite a while. The mule that appeared on screen was a female mule named Molly, selected because she was easy to handle. Well, of course she was. Oh, sure. <laughs> she didn't need us. One of the things that's very different about mules is that the mollies are much more independent and learn faster than the boys do. Right. The boys need more emotional support, if yeah. you will. <laughs> 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 so she was she was purchased from Ed Frazier in Drexel, Missouri. Uh, according to author Pauline Bartel, Universal Studio paid $350 for the animal, but made millions from the film series. Molly was trained by Les Hilton, an apprentice of Will Rogers. Hilton went on to train Bamboo Harvester, the horse that played Mr. Ed. To create the impression that the mule was actually talking, Hilton used a thread fed into the animal's mouth, which would cause Molly to try to remove it by moving her lips. The same technique was used for Mr. Ed. Hmm. Um, of course, another one that everybody uh, seems to be familiar with uh, from 1952 to 1970 was Death Valley Days. Oh, yeah. And that start. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that starred Stanley Andrews as the old ranger and the first host of Death Valley Days. And style varied with every episode, but and they all changed. It was a TV show, and it was it was a lot of fun to, to watch. The longest running was the Old Ranger, a character played by veteran Stanley Andrews from fifty two to sixty four. While the series followed the anthology format with all new stories and characters in each episode, the series utilized many character actors over its eighteen year run. Another one that people are familiar with is Gunsmoke. Oh, yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. With James Arness and Ken Curtis and the mule, Ruth. And that ran from 1955 to 1975. Wow, that was a long and run. Gunsmoke, starring James Arness as Matt it was a really long run, but it was a really, really good show. Yes. And, and yes. Those, those actors were just amazing. Here's an interesting thing that they said about Ken Curtis is that Festus was patterned after a Cedar Jack, Frederick Munden, a man from Curtis's Los Animas childhood. Hmm. Cedar Jack, who lived 15 miles south of town made a living cutting cedar fence posts. Curtis observed many times that Jack came to Los Animas where he would often end up drunk and in Curtis's father's jail. Festus' character was known in part for the nasty, twangy, rural accent which Curtis developed for the role, but which did not reflect Curtis's actual voice. He got that from Cactus Jack. Interesting little piece of trivia, huh? Yeah. That's... Here's another one. Now, we see John Wayne on horses all the time in all those movies that he did. I never shot nobody. I didn't have to. Uh, but in 1957, he did a, a film called Legend of the Lost, where he actually rode a mule. I miss As that. the lead animal. Well, I gotta see Yeah. That. Huh. Yeah, Legend of the Lost, 1957. It's an Italian-American adventure film produced and directed by Henry Hathaway, shot in Technorama and Technicolor by Jack Cardiff and starring John Wayne, Sophia Loren, 
and Rosanna Brazzi. Mm. So that is a real interesting one. Yeah. I do remember seeing it at one point, and really? uh, but that was a long time ago. I'm going to have to watch it again myself. Then, of course, there was a Bridie of the Grand Canyon that was produced in 1966, yeah. and that was based on the novel written by Marguerite Henry. Then I got into some ones that I, or one that I really wasn't sure of, but I thought maybe it had a mule in it, and uh, sure enough, it did, was Dingus McGee that was produced in 1970 with Frank Sinatra and George Kennedy. <laughs> that was, it was basically horses like I was talking about before. <laughs> But I found that there were mules pulling the stagecoach. I think it was six mules that were pulling the stagecoach. I went, oh, good, it's got mules in it. (laughs) So it got on my list. And then one that a lot of people that were very familiar with was Two Mules for Sister Sarah that was produced in 1970 and starred Clint Eastwood and Shirley MacLaine. That one, that one was a pretty good one, too. Mm-hmm. But I still haven't figured out if those two mules weren't two donkeys. They uh, kind of yeah. looked like they were. Right. They were small. Yeah. They were small, and you know how many mules can sometimes look like donkeys. Yeah. And the other thing that comes to mind, too, is the donkeys would be easier to manage than a mini mule. Yeah. Mini mules <laughs> have attitude issues. <laughs> I, I call it the Napoleon complex. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then there was another one that was fairly uh, popular in 1976 that starred Don Knotts and Tim Conway um, in Gus uh, with a low-ranking football team, and the California Adams are at a constant loss until they recruit a new player a mule named Gus. And it turns out that Gus is an amazing place kicker and, and kicks gold all the time. So that was a fun one. That was a really fun one. Another one is M- Mule Feathers with Rory Calhoun and Don Knotts in 1978. Oh. A preacher... Tra- Yeah, a preacher travels with a telepathic mule in this Western comedy, a sagebrush flim-flam man makes a career out of swindling naive settlers and pulling off the occasional train robbery. So, you know, so the mules are popping up all over the place here, you know. And another uh, another couple of films that I I did not remember but my crew told me about um, and reminded me, yes, there are mules in this one too. Don Knotts, Tim Conway, and a mule named Clarice in 1975, uh, set in the, the West, set in the Wild West in 1879, the Apple Dumpling Gang, and the Apple Dumpling Gang rides again. So that is another one where the mules were, you know, right out there in the front, you know, starring roles, which was awesome. Sure. Now another mule film that I thoroughly enjoyed after the first part was over was one called the postman with kevin costner in 1997 um it's in a post apocalyptic world in 2013 uh and it's all about uh the post office and the government and all of that and how the government fell and and it's reviving the post office and everything. And Kevin Costner begins the movie riding in on a beautiful mule that he absolutely loves and they have a bond like no other. And they ride into this town and then these apocalyptic people come riding in at gunpoint. They just take over the town, take everything that's got value in the town and they take Kevin Costner's mule and they kill him. Mm. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. But I liked the way that they portrayed the the bond that he had with that mule. You know, that gave people a good sense of what mules were like, even if he wasn't in the rest of the, the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, the rest of the movie was all horses, but what the heck. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
You know, at least they portrayed the meal the right way. Well, the horses need jobs, too. <laughs> well, they do. They do. That's true. You know, but uh, it, this was particularly cool of Kevin Costner to put in there that that argument against mules being stubborn and yeah, all of that. Very cool. Now, now there were there are two guys that have been filming out at Bishop Mule Days, and they have several films that they've produced. One here that was produced in 1997. The people who appreciate mules will like this program. It's about them. It's called Mule People, and it's produced by Ted Fay of Gold Creek Productions. And you'll get to know some of the Bishop Mule Days people and, and the people that attend Bishop Mule Days and get to know what mule people are all about. Ted Fay and Gold Creek Creek Productions did another one in 2003 about the auctions, the mule auctions, and it's called Mule for Sale. Another video producer that spent a lot of time out at Bishop and actually filming the Bishop Mule Days uh, highlights every year for years was Video Mike Kearson. And in 2004, he filmed uh, Long Ears Everywhere that highlighted Jerry Tyndall and Von Twitchell and Bonnie Shields. And uh, so he picked out the people that were the stars of Bishop in this one in that year. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does most years is that he would go in and pick out the highlights and do his videos about those. He did another one in 2006 called Hooves and Roses that were about the long ears in the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Parade. He did one in, in, let's see, it would be 2006, too, called Love Those Long Ears. And it's all about uh, people who are passionate about long ears and all the Bishop Mule Day's highlights. And each year he, use, he chooses some aspect of the week-long event for a more in-depth look. He decided, too, in 2006 that there was a very unique movie that he could call which, or could film, which was called Mules on Snowshoes. Wow. And he, he, this is, this is a documentary about Bill Balfrey's family, and they came to a remote northern California town of Etna by covered wagon in the 1850s. And as Bill was growing up, he made friends with the Smith brothers, Bill and Ralph, who in the early 1900s delivered mail by mule train from Etna to Sawyer's Bar and points downriver. Come along with the two Bills in this film and others as they take us back to a time when tunnels had to be hand dug through the 10 foot snowdrifts and the mules wore snowshoes oh and the mail gosh. was delivered. Wow. That's just extraordinary. Just extraordinary. Yeah. Now, Ted, in 2007, Ted Fay of Gold, Gold Creek Productions produced Chasing the Rainbow Adventures of the Desert Prospectors. So that's another one that's quite interesting. And these are things that you would normally not see movies about. But these, these two guys do documentaries, so what you see is real. What's in these movies is real. Wow. Another one that is a fiction one and was produced uh, in 2009 was Tommy and the Cool Mule. And it stars Grant Barker and Ice T of all people. Really? <laughs> Tommy Braxton. Yeah, Tommy Braxton's father goes to war and never returns, forcing Tommy to become the man of the house and help support his mom and his sister. Tommy makes a friend and finds a way to save his family farm when he meets Jackie A, a talking mule. Against all odds, Tommy and Jackie A triumph in a race over the other bullies and their horses in the country stock show in a spectacular display of resolve and determination that caps off a winning family adventure. That one sounds like a good one, too. I haven't seen that one yet. I'm going to have to watch it. Oh, yeah. And in 2010, uh, Mike Kirsten, video Mike Kirsten produced a movie called uh, Seasons, A Year in the Life of a Pack Station. 
And so he filmed the Virginia Lakes pack outfit through springtime preparations, competing at Bishop Mule Days, and on to the pack se- the summer pack session. And then he takes you through all of that. And with the coming of autumn, the pack station gets ready for winter, and the cycle begins again. These are all really, really interesting. Ted Fay did one in 210 as well, called Hitch Up Your Mule and the Hidden Trail. And that's all about uh, hitching up your mules. Mule Skinner Bobby Tanner of Bishop, California, yeah. Mule Days, what it takes to hitch up a 20-mule team. And he takes you through the Mojave Desert and the historic route of the 20-mule team from Death Valley. Um, ruts from the original 20 mule team can still be seen. And then from 2011 to 2019, uh, Bishop Mule Days at 4,000 foot elevation hosts the largest mule show in the world. And like I was saying before, Video Mike Kearson films that every year with different highlights. And so that's kind of his span. He told me in 2019 he thought he'd been doing it long enough. And he also is a very interesting person because he supports a therapeutic support place in the Napa Valley in California. And, you know, I support Hearts and Horses Therapeutic Riding Center. So we had a lot to talk about on that that thing, too. He's not just a, a film person, you know, that films Bishop Mule Days, but he's also the proprietor of a, a therapeutic support institution in California, which does good things with people that really need it. Oh, that's neat. Oh. Yeah. And and then in 2012, uh, Mike also went to uh, Colfax, Washington, and videotaped Palouse, Threshing Bee, uh, in the heart of Palouse, using only authentic original equipment and, and uh, draft animals, the public is treated to a day of living history, featuring the maj- majesty of draft horses and mules. They hitch up 20 mules to all that farming equipment. And, you know, mixed in with draft horses, too. They take you through the whole harvest session in that, in that video. It's really interesting. 2012, Ted Fay and Gold Creek Productions did a video about the 20 mule team of Death, of Death Valley. And so they've got a lot of the archival footage, photographs, reenactments, and this documentary brings to life the 20 mule team of Death Valley. Now, another sh- video short that we found when we were doing the West Point Academy Mule Mascot Exhibit here at Lucky Three Ranch. When we were looking for all of the Army historical stuff to put in our West Point Academy Mule Mascot Exhibit, we found this movie called The History of Army Mules. It were, was produced in 2013 taken just outside of Fort Bragg on a ranch in Lumber Bridge, North Carolina. Uh, There are two brother mules that are unaware of how their lives are about to change forever. These animals are the embodiment of strength, hardiness, and perseverance, and are about to embark, uh, embark on a journey that led them through the gates of the world's premier leader development institution of West Point. Uh, they're about to take their place in history as the new generation of mascots for a corps of cadets at the United States Military Academy at West Point. It tells the story of two of these mules and how mules have been mascots at West Point for, uh, since 1936, and there have been 15 mules and they tell you about each of the mules, the 15 mules, in this movie. And then as they leave and the movie ends, they will help to reinforce the motto of duty, honor, and country that continues to sustain the Corps of Cadets and the Long Gray Line. Currently, those who have been added are Ranger 2, Striker, Raider, 
Ranger 3, and Paladin. Now, we really had fun doing that, that exhibit, and we hope that people will come here to see it because the other thing we've done is we have looked through archives and internet and everything we could find on mules and the mule mascots of the West Point Academy. One point, another very, very wonderful uh, caricature of a mule owner is Bernie Harbord. He's very dear to my heart. He, he has managed to do just about everything wrong with his mule that he could possibly do. And he, what he does is really kind of uh, odd. He, he's an adventurer, and he has these dreams. He's a romantic, and he has these dreams about traipsing across the United States with his mules. And he's, he's done uh, several now, and then he asked me to review his books and everything. And they're, turn pa they're, they're page turners because I'm telling you, the guy just, you go, oh, my God, what can happen next? Right, you know, right. But the, the beauty of it all is that Bernie learns his lessons in all of these expeditions that he takes. So he may do something wrong. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, in the latest book he had me review, I did, I did write him a good review because he is an adventurer, and he does love his mules, and he has such an amazing bond with them, uh, but they really, I mean, they really go through some stuff. This this last book called Two Mules to Triumph, he actually crosses a nuclear range. <laughs> Everybody's asking him, how are you going to get across there? That's government property. Really? And he's like, well, I haven't thought about that yet. Yeah. So does he glow in the dark now? <laughs> well, I don't know. I really don't know. He appeared to do fine. And, and, he, he, and there was a guy named Charlie in the first chapter of this book. Bernie talks about how this guy called Charlie told him that he had to have an angel on the top of his pack mule. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. So, and and one of the things that he did, he he did a video in 2019 called Lost Sea Expedition, where he and his mule Polly, Polly was pulling a miniaturized Conestoga wagon all the way from Canada to Mexico, and all of the, again, all of the little adventures that they had along the way. And the one that I remember most was when, I guess, Polly got a little nervous when they were traveling down the road and there was a 90 degree angle turn in the road and there was barbed wire fence that was, you know, following the road. And Polly went straight instead of making the turn and she jumped the fence but the wagon didn't. And the picture that was in the book and the video that he showed in the movie, she's on one side of it and he's on the other and he's trying to figure out how to get them both on the same side again. But, you know, it's just adventures like that that Bernie has. And Bernie has a wonderful heart. And he loves, like I said, he loves his meals and he learns his lessons, just like we all do with okay. our meals. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. And, and what he does is just engaging. And he is a really good writer. He makes you feel like you're right there with him. And when he does these videos, he's the only one that's doing it. He gets on camera and talks. He knows how to set up his equipment, film it himself. Cool. You know, <laughs> do all the narration and everything it takes to put that film together. He did it all himself, wow. which I find extraordinary. He's, he's an extraordinary man. He really is. Another Mule movie that I happened to stumble on, which I was quite surprised by, was called Two Sinners and a Mule, and that was produced last year in 2023. Yes. With that, Cam... That's on Amazon. Uh-huh. Yeah, Cam Jigandet. I had to see it. I thought, how did I miss this? Right, right. Um, and it was okay. Okay. It was okay. The Mule was just kind of a long... Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it yet. I was just looking up the the movies and saw it listed. Yeah, I think uh, it's a very entertaining movie. It's got a pretty pretty good plot line. Um, it's got two ladies of pleasure that were kicked out of town and run across 
they run across a bounty hunter that was shot to hell. After nursing him back to health, the ladies decide he needs their help to track down Gila Grimes, a ruthless murdering bandit, for half of the bounty, which is $2,000. It's an entertaining movie, but again, I have to question a Hollywood approach on things. Mm -hmm. You know, when you know as much as we do about ranches, tech and equipment and right. animal behavior and all of that sort of thing, you know, and especially me after doing all of this filming that I've done since 1997, I have a hard time watching a movie for story value anymore without criticizing everything that they did wrong because I would have done it different, you know, kind right. of thing. Sure. But but I do try to enjoy the stories and appreciate what they were trying to do. And this is just another one of those. But I was very happy to see that they actually had a mule in it, even if the mule wasn't a star. It was a pack mule. You know, and the, the guys were riding the horses, the girls were riding the horses, you know. But it was, there were more close-up shots in it of the meal. <laughs> I guess you could say it like that. Well, they weren't we, way in the background like they used to be, wow. you know. We are making progress. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, that's me just observing petty little details. Oh, no, that, I, get, <laughs> I get it. I see that, too. Yeah, yeah. So I got to say that from this standpoint, comparing this, to the early movies that used to be produced and the way that they were doing it. I think that we are doing our job in educating people about the value and, and the uh, admirable things about mules that everybody could enjoy. And I want to tell the people out there that maybe take a chance. Don't be, don't be so fr afraid of these big animals. You know, uh, a horse is likely to do more damage to you than a mule will. And if a mule does you damage, you can be sure that he did it deliberately. <laughs> Um, they generally will not run you down like horses will. Horses will run right over the top of you. Yep. Uh, but if a mule runs over the top of you, you can be assured that he meant to do it. Uh, because he had nowhere else to go. If he's got somewhere else to go, he's not going to run over you. Right. Because they don't like stepping on squishy things. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I right. they don't. that. <laughs> no, they don't. And 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 when you know when you're doing something like like grooming them or something, and they take exception to what you're doing. <laughs> uh, normally, they won't step on your feet. But you can be assured that if they do, it's it's like uh uh. Um, I don't like the way you're doing this, and right. you try to push them off, and they lean into you and step down harder. Aren't you getting it? Lighten up with that brush, you know? <laughs> the horse will stamp you on the foot, and yeah. then do it again if you don't move out of the way. <laughs> you know, so I got to say that mules and donkeys are working their way into the hearts of many more people in this new industrial age. Horse has been used for so many films for decades, but the unique character of mules and donkeys are drawing attention from everyone, everywhere. This is awesome. Okay, and you have a website. I have a website at www.lucky3ranch all spelled out, not the number three. And under training, you're going to see all the different things that I have been talking about today. And the list is going to be on a Mule Crossing article that will follow 
this post on Facebook. You can find the Mule Crossing article right after this on Facebook, and you can also find it under training on the website. We have a children's website, so you can take a look at the children's series at jasperthemule.com. You are welcome to call me. I answer all my phone calls at 800-816-7566, or you can email me directly at meredith at luckythreeranch.com. All right, Meredith, you have a wonderful afternoon, and we will talk soon. Gotta go. My mule is looking for me. Meal Talk is an Every Cowgirl's Dream production.